on September the 9th of 2020. We're going to be streaming to our regular Square on a Square Facebook page and to our premium club membership and to YouTube. So if you have any questions or comments as we go along, you can type those right in there and it's possible that it's something that I can answer today. So for those of you that are brand new to the Square on a Square system, it is a system where we help remove the human element which is the cutting, the sewing, and the pressing. So when you can help remove the human element or improve upon the human element, then it actually gives you more perfection. The system gives you speed and it gives you accuracy. The other thing that I like to do with my quilt piecing <clears throat> is, is that I like to do what I call the science of patchwork, and that's try to figure out how to improve in certain areas, like with the triangle units with the square and a square system. But so many times we just have squares and rectangles in quilts, and we think that we can cut those and put those into our blocks and make them perfect. But we still have that human element of cutting, sewing, and pressing. So I really look at putting a quilt block together just totally different than I think anybody else in the quilt world in the way that we do it. So we use the square and a square system for our triangle units and those triangle units we call options and there's options 1 through 40 and everything starts out just like this with a square in the middle and strips on the side. And then the different ways we trim them up, we get flying geese and half square triangles and, and units like that. Today in the block that we're going to make, we're going to be doing option 4 half square triangle units and all from just a simple basic square just like this of square in the middle and strips on the side and then we I also do things different with my squares and my rectangles of putting them into a block I don't cut them to the exact size we do an overcut with them and trim them up later or as we go and I also don't press with every seam I wait and press until I have to because I feel like that the pressing of the cotton fabric, that it really changes the structure of that thread or that fiber that's, um, that's woven together to make your fabric. And so we don't want to do that until we're ready for it to be set in stone. So like hard seam it. So while your fabric is still in an unpressed state, it um, is more pliable and easier to work with. And once you press it, then it stays in that state and you don't have that um, ability to move it around um, so that it can mesh together and nestle together in those seams perfectly. So for those of you that are brand new to the system, if you have any questions, just ask as you go. I'm not really starting at the very, very beginning, but we are going to start with sewing our basic squares. So we're going to start with sewing the basic squares. Sometimes when I teach, I already have these made, but I think even the approach and the way that I go at sewing these is, is different. And so we're actually going to do that today. And um, I'm going to be monitoring the questions as we go. So occasionally I'll um, stop and check to see what kind of questions we have. So anytime you have questions, just jump right in there and um, we'll get those answered. So we're going to actually, um, let's just look down here at the demo table and let's look at the block and let's kind of start at the beginning because I like to be able to empower people to build their own blocks, to be able to look at blocks and break them down into um, the system. So this is the uh, Square and Square reference book. It's volume one, and it's going to have the first 17 options in here. So those are the options that are the triangle units, uh, flying geese, half square triangles, all of that. And then it also has the charts in it so that you can take any pattern and any design and break it down into what size of squares and strips that you need. So if we have any very, very beginners in here that need some help um, and you want me to, well, I'll just go ahead and show. Let's just go ahead and trim a couple options here. So um, option one is the very first option and Basically, after you learn option one and option three, you're ready to go and make anything. So option one is when we trim, leaving a fourth of an inch on all four corners, and it gets your square in a square. So I'm going to use the mini square in a square ruler, and I'm going to go right here where the 90 is, and I want the tip of that 90 to go right into the tip or the corner of the square. And you can see a fourth of an inch here before we cut, and that's going to give you your fourth of an inch um, seam allowance. I'm really going to move pretty quickly today, so if I leave um, 
somebody behind just holler and say hey 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 hold on a minute I need to see that again or I don't understand what you're doing we have a lot of videos that you can go back and watch here on the Facebook page and that you can go in and watch on YouTube wherever you're at and we're also going to be doing, you'll get a link here on the uh, page, we're going to be doing what we call Quilt Club Week. And Quilt Club Week will start October the 8th. And we're going to have a lot of classes on piecing and on stash busting and on learning how to quilt on your regular domestic home sewing machine. So I want you to, to sign up and join us for Quilt Club Week and the details are in that link below. If you have questions on that, We'll uh, talk about that here in a little while too. So this is an option one, leaving that fourth of an inch on all four corners. Now option two, we're gonna skip and we're gonna go right into um, option three flying geese. So to make your option three flying geese, you want to trim two opposite sides just like this, leaving the fourth and the other two sides you wanna go right up to the tip sharp. So we're going to show you that trim. So instead of putting the 90 in there, we're going to step it over two more lines, one, two, and we're going to put the tip of the line right here, right into the tip or the corner of the square, and it's going to trim it up sharp. So for those of you that are new to this, just hang with me for a minute so that you can see the process and see what we're doing. So we stepped it over. We call it the two-step. It goes right in the tip, down the seam, through the grid, trim it up. Now I want you to notice how this is a sharp trim. It's not that fourth of an inch like you see here. So let's go to the opposite side and let's do that again. So now I have two opposite sides right up to the tip. Now on these other two opposite sides, we're going to trim leaving the fourth of an inch off of that corner. So there's the 90. It goes right in the tip just like we did before. And we're going to do it over here. Now we're going to come through that sharp point where we were at and cut it in half and there's my two flying geese just like that. So pretty cool system in the way that you always start out with a square in the middle, strips on the side, trim leaving the fourth of an inch or right up to the tip. Now when we make our half square triangles today for this block, this block is one that we're going to cut and sew and go from beginning of figuring out sizes all the way to the very end. We need half square triangles. So what we do is we come up here and we trim sharp on all four corners. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm doing the um, two-step trim on all four corners. I did it on two for the flying geese here where we cut. And since we're going to cut through all four corners for half square triangles, we're going to do it on all four corners. So you can see me just going around that center square. So once you have all four corners cut, then you're just going to come through and cut through all four. And there's your half square triangles just like that. And that's what we're going to be using in our block today. We're going to have some here that are the blue, the kind of inside pinwheel, and then these red ones that are the larger outside pinwheel. So option four. So once you know how to trim, once you understand that everything is a square with strips, how to leave a fourth, how to go right up to the tip, that's all there is to it for the square and a square system. All of the other units, the triangle units, are just going to build off of those things that I've already shown you. So let's now go to um, our reference book and our block and let's talk about sizing. Of course, if you're wanting to make quilts, with patterns, we've got all of that figured in here for you with sizing and pattern uh, amounts in all of our books. But it's nice to be able to look at a block that you see somewhere, like this one we saw on uh, Facebook somewhere, and I just printed it off and you can use the charts and figure out what size you want and how to make it. So anytime you're doing pattern adapting or pattern building, you have to work with a sewn size. So if we're going to make this block, it would be a 10 inch sewn or a 10 and a half with raw edges. So since it has raw edges, it's 10 and a half. When it gets into a quilt, it'll be 10. But because I'm, I'm saying that about the 
cut edges and the sewn edges is when you work with building a pattern, you have to work with that smaller measurement, which is the sewn size. So if we want a 10 inch sewn block, and we know there's five units that go across. So see, when you look, there's one, two, three, four, five even squares or even um, blocks or units that make up the edge of the quilt. So here's one, two, three, four, five. They're all going to be even. Talking about sewn sizes, two, four, six, eight, ten. There's our ten inch sewn. So if this is a ten inch uh, sewn and these are two inches sewn, we know that these little squares here have to be two and a half cut. So there's the two and a half cut. And we know that the rectangles have to be a two and a half by four and a half cut. We know it's a four and a half because we know this is a two and a two, which is four, add the seam allowance four and a half. We know this rectangle piece has to be a four and a half. So when we break the block down and we look at it, we see that we have these corner units with a plain square, a half square triangle, and the rectangle. And those four corners are all the same. So once you figure one, you've got it for all of them. And then we know that this section here is going to have the half square triangle and a plain square. This was a half square triangle and a plain square with a rectangle. And then this is just a plain square. So this is really a very easy one to learn on and to figure on because you have so many units that are exactly the same. You have a lot of squares that are exactly the same. Rectangles are just double squares. And then the half square triangle is just different colors, but all the same size. So if we want a um, half square triangle option four, and we know that this is a two inch sewn or two and a half cut, then we're just going to go in here to page 34 in our black volume one square and a square book. And we're gonna go to the option four half square triangles. And at the top of the chart, it says sewn size. We know that's a two inch. We find it here and we move across. It tells us what size to cut. Make sure you pay attention to sewn or cut, the center square and the strips. So we know that our center square is going to be a cut four inch and our strips here are two and a fourth that we're gonna sew around. So I've already got the pieces cut. So to make this block, we're actually gonna work on two squares. So as you can see here, we have one, two, three, four red and one, two, three, four blue. You're gonna get four out of each square. So I'm gonna get four blue out of this one and four red and four floral and four red floral. And our strips that we sew around are two and a half. So we're ready to go with these. We're gonna go ahead and go to the sewing machine and we're gonna get started on our half square triangles and we're making two blocks. So we'll have one that's um, red with blue and then we'll have one that's blue with red in there. And on the other pieces uh, of our pattern, we know that the exact size that we need to cut are two and a half on all of these, but I like to overcut my pieces. I like for them to be larger uh, that way I can make allowances for the human element and I can get more speed and more perfection. So instead of cutting these a perfect two and a half inch squares or rectangles that are two and a half by four and a half, I cut them larger so they would need to be at least two and, two and three fourths or three. I cut mine three because that was easy to do. And um, um, we're going to, that way it helps, it allows us to be human and make a little bit of, of a of an air of an angle or whatever. And we're also going to use them as strips. We're not gonna cut them into squares. So I'm gonna show you a speedy way that I put blocks together. You're gonna get these beautiful squares and triangle units and I'm just gonna use squares and strips. So let's head on over to the sewing machine. And if you have any questions, just type those right in as we go along. And I'm going to check real quick. Looks like I need to refresh. It really changes Oops. the structure of that. Okay, sorry about that. Let's look and see what we've got. Um, Cindy, I don't really have a name for the block. It's just one that uh, popped up that I decided would be a good one. 
but I did put the double pinwheel at the top. Um, I'll probably come up with a different name for it. Um, okay, looks like no specific questions, so if you have one, um, just type it in there. So we're going to start out first with our basic square for our square root of square system, and that will be the triangle units. So I have two and a fourth inch strips, and I have four inch uh, squares. So I'm going to sew to the end of my scrap. I'm going to put my strip in, and I'm just going to load up my two red, my two florals, and my two solids. Leave about a finger space in between. And all of these are my new fabrics I'm working in. The tattered and torns are here. The florals will be here by the end of the year. And you want about a finger space in between. Not a half an inch, not a fourth of an inch, just somewhere in between. So I kind of sew to the end of my fabric square and then however long the toes are on the foot, on my presser foot thingy, then that's how far apart they are. See, I don't lift it up, I don't tuck it under, none of that. And I'm working on two blocks, so that means four squares. So now I'm just going to come back here, clip off my scrap. It's really easy to get three of these off. And I really like my um, five inch scissors at my machine because I do cut fabric at my machine. So you can see how they came off like this and I cut it and I just bring them around and lay them down. You need the opposite side on there. And those of you that are new to the Square and Square system, you can go to squareandsquare.com if you want to go to the website and look around at any of the books and rulers. The book I was using at the cutting table is the Volume 1 reference book, which I feel like is a necessity for the system. And if you don't have any of the rulers, I suggest the original one. The Grande one is our newest, and I know people are, are loving, loving the new Grande. So I still had one back there that I cut off and I brought around. And I'm sewing on the opposite side. Now I don't have any more that needs side one or two, so I'm just going to cut that off. And I'll come back to it in a minute. So I just put my scrap in there. It's a little bit big, but I like putting the length in there because part of what that scrap is supposed to do is push my fabric out so that I can get to it and cut it and work with it and do what I need to do. So we're just going to come in here and separate these pieces just one time. You don't have to clean it up. Just go right through the middle of that little part in between on the strips and separate them. And now we're going to go press. And I have certain times that I press. I really think pressing is a misunderstood part of piecing. Some people want to steam and starch and press at every drop of the hat. And I do it very uh, strategically in certain times. Now, when you're working on the basic square like I am here, you can pretty much press any time you want. But you need to think about that when you press, you're heating up those fibers in your fabric and you're actually kind of reweaving them, restructuring them. And once you, you do it with the heat, it's pretty much set and it's hard to go back in and change. So I work with a wool mat. I use no starch, I use no steam, and I only press occasionally. So this is what they're looking like. And now we need to go in and sew a strip on side three and four, and we're going to do a short strip. These are four inches, so they have to be at least four inches long. I'm going to cut them just a little bit bigger. I like to oversize. So this is my other strip. I had two of them cut. And I'm just going to lay it across my, my square. So I'm just kind of getting a guess or an estimate. 
and I'm just folding them up um, in my hand. And that's, that's really plenty long. I could probably actually get one more out of it. For those of you that want to be real cautious with your fabric, let's just go a little bit shorter. Now that first one is a little bit longer because it has that selvage edge on it. When my pieces are little, I don't really worry about it, but as they get larger like this, I do try to make sure. Okay, so that will work, but it's it's going to be, I'm going to, I don't know, I think it's too close. I'd rather it not be so tight. Okay, I like that better. Okay, that's plenty to go across my, my square. And then you just clip these folds. You don't have to measure them and use a rotary cutter. It's just smoke and needle sew in here. Now I like to space out a couple. I'm just working with four, so I'm going to go ahead and space out my four. And since I have all this in my hand, I'm going to go ahead and lay down one strip on one side of each one. I'm going to line it up. Anytime you can do multiple repetitions of the same thing, it'll increase your, your speed and your accuracy. Now, as I'm sewing from seam to seam, I want to make sure that everything is good. But when I'm sewing above the seam here, it doesn't matter. When I'm sewing below the seam here, it doesn't matter. This is side three. Side three and four, we usually do the short strips. Once again, come back here and grab some of them. I can get three pretty easy. I'm going to start it in the machine. And the reason why I start it is because I don't want to turn, I don't, I want to turn loose and I don't want to lose it. I don't want it falling around. So I start it in there so that it can be my third hand. And I'm just going to put side four on. See how I caught the next one so it doesn't move around? some questions I need to look? No? Mm. Okay. I'm going to clip off my scrap. I still have one back here of the four. It needs side four. my machine and my needle in a fabric sewing mode and you can just keep going without the hassle of a machine starting and stopping and it helps to push my fabric out so it's easy to snip it and get it out of the machine. So now I just come in here and separate these and we're ready to go press again. Any questions? So once again, I want to just kind of go over the top and heat those seams up, open them up, open out. We're opening the square up. We're not opening seams. We're opening the basic square or the strips. Okay, so these are now going to turn into our Hasbro triangles. And 
You can use the mini ruler, the original, or the grande. And my mini is right here, so I'm just going to use it. The size of the ruler doesn't have anything to do with the size of the basic squares, the half square triangles, or the block. So we want to do a Texas two-step on all four corners. And actually, I think the grande, the new one, is probably easier to use for half square triangles than doing that two-step over on every one of them. When you look at the grande ruler, you see where the blue line falls off the edge of the ruler, and you're just going to use the tip of that blue line right into the corner. And I think it's much easier to just quickly go in here and use the grande for half square triangles. And the grande is our newest ruler. It came out in spring of 2020. And I'm just falling in love with it more and more and more. So as you go along, you want to make sure that's sharp. See, there's no red fabric right here. We just trimmed it up sharp. And as you go around, you want to make sure that your unit is staying um, square, that it looks nice and neat. Not that it lines up perfectly with a line, but that it stays parallel or neat. Now, if these pieces that you're um, cutting off here are a pretty nice size, you can save them and sew them on a square, just like these were strips on. You can also take these and put them on a square, but they have to be proportioned correctly. So see, that one is big enough to go on a smaller square. So for those of you that are brand new, don't look at this and think, ah, that wastes too much fabric. I'm not going to do it. It's going to give you speed and accuracy, and those little scraps are only limited to your imagination and how you reuse them. So once you have it all trimmed up, you can just go in here and cut tip to tip right through those squares, and you're going to have your um, first set of um, half square triangles ready to go. So we'll decide where we want to put these in the quilt here in just a minute. We're going to do this to the other squares, to the other basic squares. moving along pretty quickly here so if you have questions or need help just type it in that comment section and don't forget to sign up for the um, quilt club week starting October the 8th there'll be the um, special website where all the teaching is at and there'll also be a Facebook page the Facebook page is not quite open yet, and you have to be a mem signed up member for Quilt Club Week before you can get in. But you can go ahead and get your name there like you're knocking on the door waiting. And that way, as soon as we open, you'll be ready. So two more basic squares into half square triangles. Notice it goes sharp in the point down the seam through the grid as you get started. And then as you go around, make sure that your block is staying um, square. And as soon as all four corners are trimmed up sharp, you come through here and cut through those tips. Careful now because this is exact. So as you go through to cut, you don't want to mess your piece up. So there's our beautiful square, half square triangles. No triangles to draw or grids to draw, just nice square half square triangles. Okay, last one of our four. 
Now with the strips that I cut that we're going to use to uh, put our block together with, we're going to make another one that has the longer red paddles on the pinwheel, and we're going to make another one that is the blue. So we're going to keep the solids where the solids are, and we're going to keep the print where the print is. But you could switch them up however you wanted to. And once you um, get your placement figured out on them, then um, those pieces are not going to change. So since our red stays with our red, let's lay it down here and get it um, on here correctly. So we're going to use a strip for these red squares here. And it's oversized, so it's going to be larger than the triangle unit. So we want to make sure if this is our red and this is our red, we want it sewn like that. So we're just going to place it on here. So one of the cool things about Quilt Club Week is, is that um, on the 8th, you're going to get classes loaded up in your portal. And on the 9th, you're going to get new classes, and on the 10th, new classes, and you can go back and watch any of the previous classes. And then you'll have a whole week after Quilt Club week to go back in and watch those. Or you can sign up for the month, and you can get those for a month. Okay, so there's our red ones ready to go. And our blue is for a different block, and it's going to be the long paddles. So the blue would be just like the red, meaning that the direction of the blocks on the square are going to be the same. So I'm going to sew right down here just like this. I'm going to leave about a finger space in between. And actually, you want to make sure that you have enough on here because that's part of why you're doing it, is so that you'll have plenty of fabric all the way around to trim these up perfect and to make um, allowances for that human element that is not always as perfect as you would like for it to be okay so this one's ready to sew and this one's ready to sew so i'm just going to put those like that now let's look at what these are going to be doing whether you're doing the blue or the red it doesn't matter they're all going to go on the background so you have to do the little square before you can do the bigger rectangle So if this is going to be my strip right here, and I'm going to sew that, then I have to sew this long side here. So I'm going to put it on my strip. And I'm going to put plenty of room in between, maybe a thumb, bigger finger, because you want plenty of room in between. Now, for my other block, I'm going to go ahead and separate these off, because they're easier to handle. And I'm going to want to do the same thing with my red for my other block. So I can just look over here and put these on the same way. So when they open up, let's make sure we're doing it right. They're gonna do that. And it looks just like that one, so we're good. The biggest thing about working with half square triangles, besides actually getting them to look this nice and neat, is to get them turned the correct direction when you get ready to start putting it into your block. So when you can get all four put on and you know the direction is going correctly, you don't have to worry about is each one of them correct. You got 
too right and too wrong or whatever, you know that they're all right on there. So now we're ready to go sew these at the machine. Uh, I like the idea of sewing the half squares on a strip and not cutting the squares to sew on. It really does help when you're putting them on a strip. It really does help keep all of the different um, opportunities that you have to mess them up. It helps remove some of those opportunities, and we call those human elements. So it really helps erase the, the human element of getting them turned wrong, but also we're going to be able to square these up perfect as we go along. So I'm just going to start it in the machine and line up my, my edge. Now the block that I had on the table that I showed you at the beginning, um, I did not do oversize, well, I oversized them, but I didn't leave a bigger space in between, and on some of them it kind of defeated the purpose of, of having an oversized square because I didn't leave enough room in between. So I really have more in between than what we normally have when we're doing basic squares, but um, these are two and a half inch, and so I needed a little bit more room. So that I can make it more perfect. And I don't know about you, but you know, you, you always want to go in and kind of square your blocks up a little bit anyway and make them perfect. So why take the time to cut all these perfect two and a half inch squares if they're not going to go in there correctly and then you don't have enough to go back in and trim them up perfect. So to me this makes perfect sense. And especially if you're working with tiny, small pieces, or small pieces or tiny pieces, you really want to be able to go back in and have room to square them up perfectly. And I want you to also notice how you can use that selvage edge to help be your leader or your starter, and then you don't have to use the actual real part of your fabric. You're going to throw that part away anyway, so you might as well get a little bit of use, make it work a little bit for you. Okay, so we have all of those on. Once again, we're going to put our little scrap in there. And see how that helps to push all that fabric out so it's easier to come back here and snip it off. And I'm going to, again, cut it into my sections. And here you can see what they look like here. And now I'm going to go in here and just cut them and separate them in between the half square triangles. And you can do this at the iron, at the cutting board or at the iron, but I kind of just always seem to like having some five inch shears at my table and just always do a lot of cutting right here at my table. And just go in between. Don't go too close to either one. That's why I wanted you to have a little bit bigger space in between. Close to a half an inch. Now, we are going to press these. I don't always press at this step um, when you just have two pieces together, but this is an important one to do so because we are going to have to come in here and square these up on one or two sides. And we want to make sure that, that we can get that fabric in what I call that cement 
that hard cement form and it won't move around on you and you'll be ready to roll. So do we have some questions? Um, so. Yes, the live is always saved and archived right here on Facebook. Um, I know I'm going pretty fast today and then that way you can go back and rewatch. I don't always get to go back and answer questions, so you might private message me if you have a question about it and make sure I know which video, um, which live you're talking about. So yes, they are saved here on um, the archive Facebook. Or YouTube. Or YouTube, yes. Okay, let's move this out a little bit so you can see it. And um, I like to go over my piece just a little bit to heat it up. Just kind of go over a little bit. And then I want my piece down. I'm going to put my iron on it and press to the square. So give it a little press, heat it up. That way it knows, hey, she's going to ask me to do something I've never done before which this square piece, you're asking it to bend over backwards. See how those fabrics lay flat both directions? They've never done anything different than that. In a cotton bowl, in the weaving of the fabric, in the printing of the fabric, it's never bent over backwards like it is now. And you're asking those fibers to do that and to live the rest of their life bent over like that. So it's nice to give them a little dab of heat it's kind of like your muscles, like stretching and warming up your muscles. It's much easier to do that back bend than just jumping right into it. Remember, your cotton fabric was alive at one time, so we kind of refer to it with some um, human characteristics. And in our Quilt Club week, we're going to have some in-depth pressing videos and piecing videos, square to square, uh, machine quilting with your regular machine quilting. We're going to learn some um, tips and hints on busting your stash. We've got some lectures and demos and classes. I mean, really, there's going to be so much in there for those days that um, you're going to be glad that there's replays um, and that you have a week to continue watching those. If you just sign up for the one week, you can sign up for a month for Quilt Club Week, or you can join Premium, and then they'll be in the portal, and you can watch them anytime. And those of you that are Premium Club, your Quilt Club Week um, is free for you. We also have the Quilt Club Week Facebook page, so uh, those of you that are in uh, Quilt Club, um, you can uh, join that Facebook page also. Okay, so here's what they look like now, and we're going to have to, we're going to separate those out because they're going in different places in your block, and that will determine what you're going to do next. So let's get our little red ones together. And our blue, our red and our blue are going to be the, the longer paddles in your windmill, in your pinwheel. So we're going to do the same thing with them. But these are the shorter ones, and they have to have one more side on them that are your floral. Now, also, when you look at these, your triangle units are your, your, your true sizing and your true edges. So you're going to go off of these staying square and off of those edges when you come in here and trim up these bigger pieces. Now, let's look at where the, the red uh, and the blue floral will go. They're going to go, and you can look at one section. You don't have to look at each one. You can look at one section. So our next seam is right here. So what we want to do is trim it on the side where the red or the blue is at, where the color is at. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to turn them all the same way so I can kind of trim them all at once. And I'm going to use my, my mini ruler because my mini ruler has this wonderful 
uh, four inch square over here in the corner and I want to use that to help me do my trimming. So I want to just put my, I want to put a, um, a grid line across my seam and I want to look and see how it's doing over here lining up and if there's a little edge right there that maybe I need to trim up. So I want to keep it uh, horizontal and square and I want to keep it nice and neat right there. So, and we want to trim where the red is. So I'm just going to trim the right side of all of these and just repeat looking at all of that as I, as I go. Okay, so he's ready. He's ready. And I'm just trying to keep them horizontal and square. I'm not really looking at any measurement. I don't, I don't, I don't care about a measurement. I'm more about lines on rulers than I am measurements. Doesn't matter what numbers they are right now. Okay, so let's do that to our blue. We want to trim along the blue side. So I'm putting a horizontal line right on the seam and I'm lining it as close as I can to the edge, kind of looking if I can to see how square it's staying. And look how easy it is to work on two blocks all at one time. If your color sequence is easy to um, remember and understand, then work with multiples. You'll move much quicker through your project. And I also, like if I was making this for a whole quilt, I never cut the whole quilt all at once. I always cut a little bit, sew a little bit, cut a little bit, sew a little bit. And then that way, if I don't like my color combos or if something isn't going the way I want it to, then it's so much easier to go in and change something at that point than if I've got the whole quilt cut. So, all right, so our next step is we want this longer rectangle piece. And if we had cut them perfect to go in here, they would be a two and a half by a four and a half. So we're going to, um, let's see what I've got here. I've got a two and three fourths inch strip and I want this to be sewn where I just trimmed up, which is along this long blue side. So these are gonna go on here like this. And once again, we're doing it as a strip. So these are kind of big. I'm gonna go ahead and take them over to the machine. I'm not gonna lay them all out. We'll, we'll get them going as we need them. What's the name of the block? The name of the block, I don't really, don't really have a name for the quilt yet. It's kind of a double pinwheel. So I guess right now- Somebody submitted that uh, off of a Facebook Picture. Yeah, I, I have a double star quilt pattern, but I don't have a double pinwheel. I just don't want to use a name that would be confusing for anybody, but I think double pinwheel would be pretty good. Okay, so we're just going to sew this long cleanup cut side right on the strip, and we're just going to keep going. And see how I have them late, positioned here on my machine? where I can just flip them over. And it's also the only only clean edge to sew on. Once again, you wanna leave enough in between that you have room to go in here and clean that up perfectly. So this is what I call the um, science of patchwork. And um, just removing the human elements. Set yourself up for success. Now these backgrounds are fabrics that we have on our website. They're ready to go. We have a new fabric line that we're working on and uh, it kind of comes in, in steps and um, um, phases. And so the, the checks that will go with this are the next ones that will be arriving soon, a couple of weeks. And then these florals that I'm working with um, will be later in the fall. are all of my own signs 
and my uh, own fabric company. I don't work with um, a bigger fabric house. I just do everything myself. So that's going to work out perfect. I can get this one on and I'm coming up on the end of my strip. So. So that worked out nice. And I'm just repeating to go through and separate these right through the middle. And you can take them to your cutting table and use a rotary cutter. Uh, but I like to just sit here at my machine before I go over and start cut and press again. Okay. Questions? You guys are a quiet group. Yeah, small row into iron is my favorite. And um, you'll be able to get those on our website during Quilt Club Week. Okay, so let's go ahead and press these that I just did my sewing on. And then we'll look at those red and blue ones and get those trimmed up. So once again, I'm going to turn them so I'm right-handed, so I want the seam on the right side. And I just kind of go over the top and just kind of heat it up and you can do two at a time if you want and then I'm going to flip it and I'm going to grab the pieced part and open up the solid part so grab the pieced part and open up the solid part so give it a little press flip it And I do like to just keep pressing on top of my previous ones. I think it just helps um, get that press in there really good and just kind of get that to, you know, get more set like cement so it doesn't move around. And it also allows it to start to cool a little bit before you handle it. You know, if it's hot when you're handling it, you can misshape it get it misshapen just because you're handling it and it's hot, especially if you have bigger pieces and they have the weight or the heaviness on them from the fabric. Okay, so these, you can just check one out. You don't have to look at all of them and turn them in your quilt, just focus on one corner section. So these are the outside edges here and here. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'll, I'll do that last when my block is all put together. So my next seam is going to be here and here on the inside. So here and here. So those are the two that I want to trim. So I'm now going to get my grande because my grande has this great corner unit on it like the mini did, but the mini was only four inches and this one goes up to uh, nine inches. So I'm putting my ruler right up into that because remember this was cut perfect and exact and it has my angle on it to keep everything proportioned under there correctly. And so now when I have this all lined up nice and neat, hand flat, I can go one side and other. Now I don't start here, don't ever start at the corner. I didn't do here and down, I went here and up. So I'm gonna to go to the center and then this way. So now this one is trimmed up perfect and ready to go in that corner. So I'm just gonna put the triangle, I'm right, so I'm gonna put the triangle up in the right. If you're a lefty, you're gonna put the triangle in the left.
and I'm not looking at numbers. I'm just putting it right in the corner. I'm lining up my blue. I'm making sure here and here it's as neat as possible. Up to the corner, over to the corner. And see how I'm trimming up where my next seams are going to be, not on the outside edge. So let me know what you're learning today, what you're enjoying, and what's new to you, what you feel like is going to help you as you get to your sewing machine. There we go, so those are done, and the red ones will be the same. So see how when you're working on something that's the same, you can work on these multiple um, units all at once and just keep the process and that way it's in your head and you have less um, opportunity for a human element, a mistake. And look how not one of these half square triangles has gotten turned. See how they're all going to turn just fine? None of them have gotten turned in the wrong spot and I guarantee you if you were doing this with squares and rectangles and one at a time, you would be ripping at least one of these out because you got it turned um, incorrectly. Okay, so here you can see these are all Working out great for there. Now let's look at this one. Where's this one going? So it's going to go, the red is the center. Oh, you know what I did? Yeah, I did. I, I thought I only needed it on one, but I need those on all four. So on this one, we're going to be sewing on both of the long sides. We don't want to do the end, but both of the long sides. So we're going to trim um, the long sides on all of these. So once again, I want to put a horizontal line on the seam and keep it lined up with the true edge that's already on there. That way I know that everything is staying proportioned under the ruler the way that it should be. Why don't you want to cut from the corner? Uh, the reason why you don't cut from the corner out is it moves, your fabric moves around and it will chip up your rulers. So it's not good for your fabric or for your ruler. So here you can see how these are all going together nice. Always start on a ruler edge, either in the middle. Don't ever, like if you are cutting a strip, don't start down here at the corner. Have your ruler coming off so that you can go in. Okay, so we'll, sorry about that, that's probably hate that sound on there. One more set of blue and we'll be ready to sew again. Yep, if your corners of your rulers are chipped, now you know why. Okay, let's see where we're at and see what we're ready to do. So do you think this is moving along pretty quickly here? Okay, so what we want to do 
is we're going to match up all we have to do is when we put these together is match up this seam we'll have extra coming off here of the solid blue and extra coming off here of the um, background so we uh, want to do this on this set and this set so we're only going to put two blues down with two reds and the other two reds um, will go here and we'll save these and we're going to put two reds down with two blues okay now um, these will go together and I think we're just going to um, um, I think we're just going to use the greens on both of them so we're going to do a green and a green like that okay so I'm going to put these on top like this and I'm going to put these on top like this and we're going to go sew these together Oh, I won't be able to sew these yet until I trim. I have to trim these. Let's go back and trim these. These have to be trimmed. Since these are the center sections and they're going in here, then these have to be trimmed. Perfect. Now, this these squares were cut two and a half, these reds and blues. And we already have one seam. So if you take two and a half minus the one fourth seam, that means two and a fourth. So I'm going to line the two and a fourth up right here and it'll give me a two and a fourth cut. You can do that with the mini or with the large ones. So here is the two and a fourth on my seam. And so that's why I'm using the two and a fourth measurement. It's because they're supposed to be two and a half cut and I already have one seam sewn right here, so there's a fourth, so that means two and a fourth. Is my measurement. Okay. All right, now we're ready to sew. So we're just going to put that other little two and a half up next to it. So the center square was cut exact because we have to sew on all four sides of it. We could not, you couldn't really overcut it. I guess you could and put it on here and then go back and trim it up, but um, to me, I don't really, I don't think it's really necessary that you do that. Go ahead and cut it. I think it's easy to forget it, and I don't know that it really helps that much. Printable pattern for this block. Um, I don't have a printable pattern yet. I just saw it on the... On a, in a picture and decided it was a good easy one to do but um, we probably will have just a simple PDF for it at uh, some point in time um, we might uh, for sure by the end of the year when our floral uh, fabric comes I think this would be one to go ahead and, and uh, complete the quilt and make enough blocks for it and, um, since the block is so simple, maybe add some more to the um, sashing or to the, the border of it and um, just really make it a beautiful um, block. Okay, so the only thing we have to match up is this horizontal seam. And we pressed it so that they just nestle together. One goes one way, one the other. And I can feel it in my hand if it feels um, smooth or if it feels bumpy. 
Now, another thing that I love about my pieces being oversized is, is that at each one of these triangle uh, points, whether it's at the top or at the bottom where I'm sewing them, there is more fabric across it. So it's not like my machine thinks that both of those are all going through there at the same time. And sometimes your machine wants to eat them or swim around with them a little bit. And this way they, um, your machine just behaves so much better with that extra little dab. Now all of this is, is cut good. It looks like I've got a little bit there on the green to trim up. I maybe was a little bit big on him. Those are all ready. Okay, so you just know that it's opposite colors. You've got red here, then it's going to be a blue one here. That's pretty easy. So what I'm talking about is here, see these half square triangles, see how this is hanging off? So your machine will sew off of this corner much more straight and smooth because you have this extra. And then of course the same thing here, you have the extra. So your machine is not thinking all at once that it's trying to go through all of it. And it just lays smooth and feeds in and your machine doesn't go crazy with it. Now, when we get to, so far we haven't done any four patch pops. We don't have a four patch pop on the pressing here because the seam here doesn't go through. We can't really do a four patch pop very good. But when we start getting the block together, here in the very center, we will have good intersections and we will do the four patch pop, which will help make all of the bulk and the fabric lay very nice. some of those off and so this one needs a blue so see how all of these just turn exactly the way they're supposed to in the quilt and um, we're just matching up those seams And I don't um, normally pin um, until I get to a harder, bigger um, section. See how those just turn? Like doing borders or sashings or you have more, uh, the pieces you're working with are bigger, you need to kind of help get them together. I'll do pins then. But for this kind of stuff, I don't do pins. So here we have um, a bottom section and see how we'll be able to go back in and trim up that one and make it all nice and neat and perfect. And this one needs a red. Okay. And I'm just really amazed and excited when I use the the square to square system for my triangle units because everything is just smooth and flat and clean and even if something isn't gone together just exactly every thread the work is still so smooth and flat and clean it doesn't really look like that you made a mistake because the stuff isn't all twisted and contorted so you can get away with more. I guess I have one last 
this one here. So let me know what you've learned today that you're going to add to your sewing tools and of knowledge and maybe how it helped, what problem you had, and what you've learned today that's going to help you um, with that problem. Look at those nice, perfect intersections and points. I love that. Makes it fun uh, to set at a sewing machine and sew when everything is looking the way that you want it to. Okay, so we have our sections together, or what you would call the rows, and we're ready to, we need to go in here and trim these up. Now, I, I do want to um, press, I'm, I am going to press this because I want to get a nice clean uh, cut on those, but I'm not going to press the middle sections. I'm going to leave those right here. And we're going to go press these, trim them up, and then we're ready to put our block together. And we have worked on two blocks for just a hair bit over an hour. And you're going to have two blocks completed. Now we're going to press these so that this goes in. And when we get all of our block together, um, you'll see how that, that'll make everything press really nice and neat. Now notice how I don't grab the edges. I come in here where the seam is at to help hold it or maybe kind of straighten it. See, I come in here and hold it to kind of just straighten it so that you can get that nice clean press. I hate to say pull or tug or stretch it open because we don't want to stretch any of our fabric. And just get used to handling your fabric very carefully, no matter what you're doing, because it has movement and shape to it, and you don't, and that's good because it helps you with your, your um, speed and perfection, but you don't want to do it at times that it's uh, more fragile. Your fabric is in a fragile uh, state, and anytime you're adding steam or starch or heat to your fabric, you are at a fragile state. And if you like what you're seeing here and, and you want some more in-depth classes and more of this learning about how to perfect your patchwork, then certainly go in there to the Quilt Club Week and sign up and see what it's all about. And um, learn. you'll learn so much during the um, sessions and the Quilt Club Week. It's really um, something that's never been done before in the quilt world. All right, so we do want to trim those centers up nice. And we're basically just cutting that center.
Now, one, another thing that I love about the ruler when you're coming in here and doing this is, is that you see that fourth of an inch line. And so you know right where those points need to be so that when you come in here and start trying to square up a section or a block, you know right exactly where those points need to be. Okay, so... The two, two blues are going to go together, the two reds. We have this next seam all nice and clean, and we're ready to sew those. So we want to make sure that our blue stays together. So I'm just going to pin one section. I'm going to come in here and pin this center green area right there. I'm just doing one and I can feel it with my hand that it's smooth and then I'm going to hold this one with my hand. I can feel it that it's all in there smooth and I'm going to keep my finger on that seam and now I'm ready to sew. When you were trimming over here, which line were you using? Um, when I was trimming over there, it wasn't that I was using a certain line. I was using horizontal lines with seams um, across the block, and then I was checking the fourth of an inch line off of any points of those triangle units. So it's just all about lines and seams. And when we go back over there, I'll, um, I'll, I'll point that out again. Okay, so we want a red to go with the red. So I'm just lining up one seam right here, which is actually the second one. And the first one, I'm just going to line up and hold it with my fingers. I can feel that it's nice and smooth. Even it out up here at the top nicely. And see, my edges are so are cleaned up cut. They're nice edges, so you know exactly where you need to sew. You're not trying to think about, do I scooch it over here or there? It was off or whatever. You're right on. And notice how everything is just fitting together and matching together so nicely. You have a couple of questions that you want to look at. Okay. here. Let's see if we have some questions. Just the last two. Uh, my sewing table is a Roberts table. I don't think they make those anymore. And um, you want me to read? New to your videos, beautiful colors. Thank you, Kathy. Those are new fabrics that are coming. Some are here. You can go check on the website. Um, your technique is very new to me. Why not cut from the corner? I think we talked about that one. Yeah. Am I going the wrong two. direction? Oh, no. It's the last two. The most two, most recent, two yeah, minutes. Yeah, but ago. I don't know if they're up or down. Why don't you ask me, because I'm not. Okay. Um, I like the finished square, but it looks complicated with all the different size of triangles. Well, the triangles are all the same. And we made those at the beginning with the basic square. So maybe they didn't get in. And yeah. So watch. maybe go back and watch the replay. Yeah, we'll have a replay. Um, 
Because it's very, so this is one of the most basic things. Yeah, and this is really a very easy block to do. It's just triangles and squares, and they're all the same size. All of the triangles and all the squares um, are the same size. But because we overcut, then you're able to size them up perfect. So a, a block like this is an easy one to start with. Um, and here you can kind of see it coming together. This blue and red one's really very pretty to do. I think once you get the hang of it and you figure out and you understand what we're doing with the oversizing, it's so easy to do. And you have so much room for mistakes. To avoid mistakes. Yeah, right. You have so much room to avoid mistakes because your seams and your cutting, your human element of your cutting, your sewing, and your pressing are never going to be perfect. So anytime you can cut and sew and press and then go back and trim it up, you're going to have better results. And your work is so neat and clean, it's just fun and exciting. And here it has been an hour and a half, and we're going to press and be done. Two blocks. Two blocks. And I'm going to show you here on this last center um, section how, see look, those are just perfect. You don't need pins because they're just going together perfect. We'll show that uh, extra little four patch top with the pressing. So even if you wanted a lot of different scrappy uh, blocks in your quilt. You can do them two at a time and keep your colors organized and your thoughts organized with it so that it makes them very easy. Okay, let's go see that four patch pop. Get your questions in because we're just about done. Do you have a pattern? Uh, this is just one that we did the pattern. We just saw this on a, on a, some picture at Facebook or magazine or something and we broke it down to our sizes. We did that at the beginning and we used our square in a square book to help us figure sizes and then we just just made it. So uh, we don't have a pattern right now but you can watch off of the video and do it and just use your scraps. So I'm going to press the uh, side, the bigger side sections but I'm not doing the middle yet. And I'm going to show you this. So let's see if we can get the camera to come down close right here. Mm -hmm. So on this center here, on those intersections, one, two, three, four, we can do what we call the four patch pop. And what that will do is it'll help remove the bulk from these big heavy corners where you have one, two, three, four, five, more, you know, more than four pieces of fabric coming together is when you have extra bulk. So wherever you see the seam, that's the one that you're going to twist towards you. So I'm going to grab it on both sides, and this one is the seam that wants to come to me. So see how I'm twisting it towards me, and we're doing the four patch pop. So see how that kind of opens up for like a little four patch right there? And see how it makes the seam, um, it's not all bulky right over here. And we're going to do that to each corner. See how that opens up like that? So now on this one, this one's closer to me, so I'm going to twist it to me. And see, I didn't have to go back in and repress anything. Everything is turning 
the correct uh, direction for me. Okay, so this one. And same thing here. So these four corners And I love that little pop that it has in that intersection where you can see that cute little design on the back. And there you can see that and it all lays nice and smooth. Now we can go to the front, smooth that out anywhere. And you're ready to come in here and trim up the edges and you're gonna have a perfect block. So you've got nice sharp points, you've got good intersections everywhere. So I think it kind of helps if you can kind of pick it up and pop it to you. Remember, don't ever grab around the edges. Okay, so we'll square the outside edges of this block up and it'll be just like if you were doing the inside. And the question was, what do you, how do you know what lines to use? So the main thing to look at um, when I'm looking here is I just, I need to make sure I have a fourth of an inch off of that corner. And that's really the only thing on any of the sides that I need to pay attention to. So I'm using my mini and I'm keeping um, any of the lines horizontal on a seam. So this line is on that seam. And I have my fourth of an inch right there. So then I'm going to come in here and just kind of check and see how else I'm doing in my block. My center sections are perfect. A little bit crooked here. I'm great there. So I'm not going to worry about this one because the rest of it underneath my ruler looks pretty good. All of these were extra, so it doesn't matter how much I cut off. The half square triangle has been the correct size from the beginning. You never want to trim any of it off, or you shouldn't have to. And I'm just going to repeat that on all four sides. So I have a horizontal line. It's all looking good. This line looks good with the seam. There's my fourth of an inch off of my point. I'm just going to check these as I go down. And since this side is already cut, you can use a line there. So make sure you're straight, just like when you're doing the square and a square system where you've already cut. Make sure you're square and then check your, check your points. And because you oversized, you've got plenty of room to trim this up and make this a beautiful, perfect block. Just like that.
So maybe you didn't know how to use the mini to square up a block and how to use the lines to stay um, square or to always check for that seam allowance. And now you have got another use for your mini ruler. There we go. Now, I want to tell you, for those of you that are brand new to um, well, anything that we do, we have a lot of different things that we do. We do Facebook Lives like this. We have webinars, which are where a group comes together, and it's like a private group. We had one of those this morning. We do Quilt Talk, which is kind of like a magazine-type forum here on the Square in a Square page, and we do live in our sewing room. So uh, live in my sewing room is kind of like what I've done here. It's just whatever I'm working on. Uh, this one I started at the beginning and went through the whole process and it could be that I just had a, block, a lot of blocks ready to sew together. That would kind of be like in my sewing room, not always from beginning to end like I did today. We also have a brand new form coming that's called Quilt Club Week. And Quilt Club Week starts on the 8th of October and on the link you can go in and read all about it and see the pricing. Basically, you can get in for $10 right now before the 15th before the 15th of September at midnight, and that allows you to see all of the classes that we're going to have on October the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th. And I guarantee you there's more classes in there than, than you can soak up. For example, on day one, we're going to have prepping your quilt lecture on, and then the hands-on beginner of how to use your domestic sewing machine and start the quilting process. You're also going to have a hands-on class on leaves, how to make leaves, how to quilt leaves on your quilt. We're going to have a lecture on panels. We're going to have a class on a scrappy nine patch. We're going to have a class on partial seams. And we're going to have a lecture on scrapology and stash busting, how to use what you have there already at home. That's what we're all about. We want to teach you how to take your scraps or how to take patterns and designs and adapt them over and to use what you've got in even your own home tabletop domestic sewing machine to do the quilting. And that's just day one. We'll also have, um, we'll have more than that. That's just a sampling of what day one will be, which is October the 8th. And then on the 9th, there'll be new classes uh, loaded and you can continue to watch classes from the 8th. And then on the 10th, new classes loaded and you can continue to watch what was on the 9th and the 8th. And then for a whole week after that, if you sign up for the week, then you'll be able to go back in and keep watching those classes. Now, also on Quilt Club Week, um, you'll be able to sign up for a month if you want, and the month is $27, and that allows you access to all of those hours of quilting uh, for a month, for 30 days. If you are part of the Premium Club, if you want to join our membership, our Premium Club, we have a special porter, portal where there's hundreds of videos and, and hour, hundreds of hours uh, like one lady said today, you can get lost in there and never come out. Uh, there's just so much teaching in there, and we continue to add more. Quilt Club Week will also be loaded into the premium, so you'll be able to keep watching those for as long as you are a part of the premium. And the premium club, you can join for a month, you can join for a year, or we have a lifetime membership. And we have had quite a few just in the last couple of weeks of, of ladies that are over 80 that have said, I don't want to miss anything. I still want to join uh, the lifetime group of um, premium. So that's pretty exciting and fun. And I love to see people who, who say, I want to have fun and I don't care how old I am. I, I want to keep learning and I want to keep enjoying what I love. And so that's what uh, Square and Square and Premium Club and all that we do is all about is to continue our fun and our education and to keep learning uh, more simplicity and easier ways of doing things. And that's what we're all about. We do approach things differently. We don't do things the way the traditional quilt world has done it for 30 years or 100 years. I'm sure you don't cook the same way that you did 30 years ago. I'm sure you pop stuff in the microwave. And that's kind of what we're about is we're, we're, we're speeding up our um, uh, the amount of time that it takes to make a quilt and we're also uh, learning more with our accuracy and helping to remove the human element. I always say that with our online teaching that quilting never sleeps so no matter what country you're in, no matter what time you sleep, if you work a night shift and or whatever, those uh, 
videos are always there waiting for you so that you can watch them. And then the other thing is, is that you get to work in the comfort of your own home, in your own bunny house shoes, and on the sewing machine that you love and that you're used to. You don't have to go to a, 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 a class or and learn a different machine to take a class from a teacher. You've never had one before. This is really the best of all of those worlds put together. We have been doing online teaching for about four years now. So we really have learned a lot with technology and have just we just keep improving as things become better and more able, we do that. For those of you that don't know me, uh, me being Jody Barrows and the Square and Square, I've been doing this all of my adult life for over 30 years now. I've been teaching professionally, traveled all over the earth, and my husband Steve is a retired pharmacist, and he does all the technology and the editing and the, the everything of the actual online part. And so we're a pretty good team, and we're here to have fun with you guys. We have really worked hard through all of the craziness of this year of 2020 to help give you th other things to think about and enjoyment and things to look forward to and when all of the quilt shows started closing down this summer and then they were trying to reopen this fall and then the fall ones started uh closing down and dropping like flies we just we were like we we just need to have an online quilting week and so that's what we're doing october the 8th and what uh, we've made it very economical i mean 10 bucks uh, for all of these classes and lectures is, is just amazing. Uh, so get your friends and come join us, and we're going to have a great time. I hope to see you then. Thanks. Bye-bye.